Through the season of Advent, we have had a sermon series entitled and focused on walking together in the light of God. Tonight is the last of the series. I invite you to join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. According to the Gospel of Luke, our Christmas story begins not with the voice of God, not with the song of angels, but with an order from an emperor. The emperor Augustus of Rome orders everyone to register at the town of their birth to be counted in his census. This means that Joseph and Mary have to move. They live in Nazareth, which is about 100 miles away on a donkey, during the rainy season, they move just to be counted for the emperor. It doesn't matter that Mary is nine months pregnant. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that the last place I would want to be in the rainy season in the Holy Lands when my wife is nine months pregnant is going on a donkey across mountainous terrain to a place where I have no registration in an inn I don't know, in a town I haven't been in for at least 30 years. My thought is, I can't even begin to imagine what Susan would say about this, being on the donkey and all the rest of it. But emperors and dictators really don't care about people's feelings or conditions. They don't care about babies. They don't care about anything but their edicts. All they care about is counting what matters to them. The money they've taken, the, peop the land they've taken, the people they've subjugated, the growth of their empire. If you don't believe me, take a good look at Vladimir Putin. Like Emperor Augustus, he doesn't care about anyone else. He doesn't care about Russians. He doesn't care about Ukrainians. He certainly doesn't care about Americans or anyone. He only cares about himself. He cares about his power, his empire. And he's not alone, because despots and destructive dictators are hoarding and counting their treasures tonight all over the world. And people and nations in their path are destroyed without any thought, if it doesn't count to them. Tonight, the whole world is not in stillness singing the carols of Christmas. There are 30 wars raging across the globe tonight. Too many of our global brothers and sisters are either fighting for their lives or praying for peace or both. Ten months ago, tonight, Russia invaded Ukraine. Tonight, millions of Ukrainians are celebrating the birth of Jesus by candlelight. In the words of President Vladimir Zelensky, they are doing this not because it is more romantic, but because they don't have and electricity. Speaking to the joint session of the United States Congress on Wednesday, President Zelensky said millions won't have either heating or running water. All of these will be the result of Russian missiles and drone attacks on our energy infrastructure. But we do not complain. We do not judge and compare whose life is easier. Your well-being is a product of your national security the result of your struggle for independence and your many victories. We Ukrainians will also go through our war of independence and freedom with dignity and success. We will celebrate Christmas, he said. We will celebrate Christmas, and even if there's no electricity, the light of our faith in ourselves will not be put out. If Russian, if Russian missiles attack us, We'll do our best to protect ourselves. And if they attack us with Iranian drones and our people will have to go to bomb shelters on Christmas Eve, Ukrainians will still sit down at a holiday table and cheer each other. And we don't have to know how everyone's Christmas list will be because ours is simple. We want victory, only victory. In his inspirational speech, the 2022 Time Magazine Person of the Year, President Zelensky showed what courage and resolve look like while delivering his entire speech in English. 
which at best is his third language, Russian being his first language and Ukrainian being his second language. Since becoming president, beginning in the earliest hours of the war in February 2022, Zelensky has been strong. He doesn't wear a helmet. He doesn't wear a bulletproof vest whenever he's in a war zone. He was encouraged on the first night to flee the country, and he said, I will never leave this country. He believes with his whole heart that he needs to stand with his people in their struggle, so he does. His singular and strong vision to win the war has inspired all Ukrainians and the entire world, except one person, Emperor Putin. Zelensky believes in his people, and he has told the world that they will remain strong and resolute until the war is won. Only victory is their battle cry. Born to Ukrainian Jewish parents, the 44-year-old Zelensky trained as a lawyer, but he liked comedy better, so he started a comedy TV show. And from that, he ran for president and won 73% of the vote. We might want to take notes with the presidential election of 24 coming up. He has shown unbreakable determination in the face of devastating assaults from the Russian military. His belief in his people and his absolute confidence that they will win the war inspires all of us. He admits that the war has changed him. He has aged. He has changed this year, he said, from all this wisdom I never wanted. Aides who once saw him as a lightweight, lightweight now praise his toughness. Slights that used to upset him now elicit no more than a shrug. Some of his allies miss the old Zelensky, the practical joker, the boyish smile. But they realize he needs to be different now, much harder and deaf to distractions, or else his country might not survive. In the face of evil, which seeks to destroy, God calls amazing children of God to stand and be counted. President Zelensky and the freedom fighters of Ukraine are such people for such a time as this. In the darkest nights, bright lights are needed to show the way. In our story, the star of Bethlehem shined brightly over the barn in Bethlehem where Jesus was born. It pointed the way for shepherds and magi to greet the newborn Savior. It was a beacon for all who had lost faith and lost track of who they were and what they believe. But our bright lights tonight come in the form of candlelight, here and the whole world over. One candlelight at a time, lit one candle by one candle across the world. Tonight they shine brighter than the star of Bethlehem when they are all put together across the millions and millions of Christians lighting candles everywhere. Joined together with our Jewish sisters and brothers on this, their seventh night of Hanukkah, all of these lights together can save the world. Do you see the power of one at work here? One person can believe. One person can bring others along in the battle for what is right and good and just. The power of one is quite literally a gift for Christmas. In the love of Jesus, the power of one transforms the world. So tonight, in the spirit of Zelensky and the Ukrainian people, I appeal to you to have faith in God and faith for all of us to have in one another too. Let us come together. Let us stand together. Let us shine the light of God, which is in every one of us for others to see. And may God's light shine in you and through you and from you to all people you meet and serve. May this bright light bring you hope all this night and for those nights to follow. And may each of us, as little lights of God, shine in each other tonight and brighten this dark night. And let us put together all these little lights in the spirit of the Ukrainian people. Let us sit down at the holiday table and cheer each other up. And let us, like our sisters and brothers in Ukraine, have one wish for our families, for our church, for our community, for our nation, and for the world, a wish that counts mightily as we push back the darkness. Victory, only victory. Let us walk together in the light of God as we now come to the table of Christ's grace. Amen.